Welcome to another video on Frontline Ulster. If this is your first time visiting the channel, then welcome. If you've already watched some of my videos, then welcome back. Today, I have the GoPro 11 Mini and DJI Mini 3 Pro. If you like what you see, then don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Braindown Fort is situated on the east coast of the Bristol Channel, south of Western Supermare. Constructed between 1864 and 1871, the coastal artillery fort was used from its construction until 1901, when it was abandoned, and then rearmed in 1940. Its strategic location at the entrance of the Bristol Channel was key to protecting the approaches to Bristol and Cardiff ports, originally from the French Navy and latterly the German fleet. To enter the fort, we have to cross a ditch 10 metres wide and nearly 4 metres deep. The original bridge was replaced in the Second World War when a brick and concrete walkway was constructed. On our right is the original officers' quarters and on the left the barrack block for the gunners of the Royal Artillery. Two subterranean magazines were also constructed. The 19th century fort is built of dressed limestone blocks and shares many similarities with the three other forts in the Bristol Channel at Steepholm Island, Flatholm Island and Lavernock Point. The fort was originally armed with seven 7 inch rifle muzzle loading guns mounted on George III 24 pounder cannon pivots. When these guns had been installed, they were nearing the end of their operational lives. As advances in naval arms and armaments were being driven forward, many of the British forts were being outgunned. But as the threat declined, the desire to upgrade the forts also dwindled, and Green Down was primarily used for training. The 7 inch rifle muzzle loading guns were removed in 1901. The rearming of the fort in 1940 saw two 6 inch Mark 7 coastal guns being installed, along with two coastal artillery searchlight emplacements and a two storey battery observation post. When the threat of invasion to the British Isles had passed in the early years of the Second World War, Britain ramped up development and manufacture of weapons and equipment to counter that of the German war machine. It was at this time when the fort was used by the curious and secretive Department of Miscellaneous Weapons Development where a number of innovative weapons were tested. One such weapon was a rocket launch depth charge that was launched from an iron track that remains today. Construction of the new 6 inch emplacements began in 1940. The limited space within the fort meant that two of the original 7 inch RML emplacements had to be filled in. The new guns were installed over emplacements 4 and 7. Each of these new 6 inch emplacements were given overhead cover. A large flat roof, supported by concrete pillars, was constructed. Each roof was a grid of steel and plastic panels, designed to protect the crews from overhead debris, not only from enemy aircraft machine guns, but also from shrapnel from nearby friendly anti-aircraft artillery. Tragedy struck the fort in 1900 when one of the ammunition magazines exploded in an apparent suicide. 
Returning to the fort late one night, one of the soldiers was reported as discharging a rifle into an air vent at the cartridge store. Loaded with three tons of explosives, the magazine exploded, destroying two RML positions, collapsing the explosive store, as well as demolishing part of the barracks and loot wall. As well as the fort and coastal batteries, Bring Down also includes features dating back to prehistory, including barrows, an Iron Age promontory hill fort, evidence of Bronze Age settlement, a Romano Celtic temple, medieval field systems, a trig point, a Second World War bombing direction arrow, and a series of Lewis gun training positions. It's currently owned and maintained by the National Trust and open all year round, although the fort buildings and magazines are secured and inaccessible. Parking in the National Trust car park with toilets and cafe is operated as a pay and display, but members park for free. It fills up quickly on a good day, so plan ahead. And also be prepared for the mile and a half walk from the car park to the fort. <laughs> 